Hello, this is Kev and welcome to Accelerator Note number 6, which is going to be on the ultimate classic, Think and Grow Rich. What I do in these Accelerator Notes is I'm looking for actionable takeaways, actionable things that you can do in your life and implement in your life that will improve your life. Because if you get a little bit of information, an idea, a thought, a strategy, whatever it is, implement in your life and it improves it, then you can build upon that. And over the long term, it's going to have a major, major impact on where you ultimately end up. Now, Think and Grow Rich, this is a fantastic book. I highly, highly recommend it. There will be a link in the description below. But what I do is I give you a summary of the book. I'm going to give you a brief summary of the book. This book is pretty big, so it's got so many good, good ideas in here. Then I'm going to give you three key takeaways that I got personally, and then I'm going to get to the questions and actions at the end on how you can actually get your mind to work, get your body to work, get taking action, okay? So, the summary then. The summary of Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Riches is a broad term. Okay, riches is, is a broad term. When, when you think about think and grow rich, when maybe somebody doesn't have never heard it before, they're thinking wealth, they're thinking money. But think and grow rich is a lot more than that. Like rich, riches is, is a lot more. It's about spirituality, it's about emotional, it's about life in general. It's not just materials, not just it's just it's just life. It's just everything. Okay, that's the first thing that's very, very key to, to understand. It's not just about you know wealth, it's all about you, it's all about life. Then, I also, it's all about removing that, that word impossible. Removing the word impossible in your life. Just for one second, just think about if that impossible did not exist. Just think about the endless possibilities. The, the amount of times that that impossible would turn I'm possible at doing anything that you want in your life. Okay, when you start to remove that word impossible on anything, it can have, it can literally change the way you look at something. If you think you're going to start a business, for example, and then it's like, uh, it's impossible for me to do that, remove it. Then all of a sudden, it opens you up to the idea that, that something is possible. Then, it's all about discovering what you want. I mean, it's, it's one of the most fundamental things about what you want. Decide what you want. And then, what I really, really like is this whole concept of burn your boats. Burn your boats. As soon as you, if you burn your boats, there was a great story about, uh, I mean, there's a great quote by Tony Robbins saying, if you want to take on the island, burn your boats. But um, he, he gives a, a, there's a small little story, side story where it's basically people uh, back in the war, they're going onto this island where the enemy is. And as soon as they've got onto the island, off the boats, onto the island, what they do is the general said, right, we're now burning the boats. So they burnt the boats, so there's no way back. All you've got to do is you've got to take on the enemy, you've got to take on the enemy, enemy, be victorious and survive or perish, die. So what you, it, it, that applies to all areas of life as well. So that, that was really, really powerful. Um, controlling the mind, controlling the mind, especially the dominant thoughts, the thoughts that are, uh, are always in your mind because the, the most dominant thoughts is what's going to play out in your life. He introduces us to a, uh, the self-confidence for formula, which I'm going to get to shortly. Vision yourself as, the, as your ideal. Vision yourself as, in the future, you've achieved the things you want to, to achieve. What do you look like? What type of person are you? What is it that you do on a day-to-day -day basis? Spend some time each day just thinking about your ideal self. Really powerful. Persistence and desire. I, I love this because... Talking about it's persistence, persistence and desire. If you think, how much do you desire something? Because that is going to determine how persistent you are. You will continue taking action in, in direct proportion of how much desire you have. Somebody that's got desire all the way up here, they are going to be persistent. They are going to be like a dog on a bone. They're not going to stop. So that was really powerful. And the major causes of failure. So that was just a quick summary. It's a, it's a great big book. There's a lot more things I could have said, but three key takeaways. Number one, the biggest one, what do you want? What do you want? You've got to decide what is it that you want? The most fundamental question in life, what do you want? How much do you want it? 
how much do you want it? When you answer that, think about what do you want and then ask yourself, how much do you want it? And then try getting that impossible to I'm possible. Okay, really, really powerful. That's the first one, I've touched on that one already. Start thinking about just journaling. Start plucking out your mind, just think, just write something down. I would like to be a millionaire or I would like to have a, four children or I would like to go skiing or I would like to learn a new language. What is it that you want? Just decide. It doesn't have to be perfect, it doesn't have to be right, it doesn't have to be pretty. Just write something down. The self-confidence formula, that's the second key takeaway, the self-confidence formula. What it basically is, is you know you have the ability to achieve what you want. I'll say that again. You know you've got the ability to achieve what you want. So you've decided what you want and then you know you have the ability to achieve it. That's a key, key component. Very, very important. And then the dominant thoughts, because you know you can achieve it, then those dominant thoughts of knowing I can achieve it will naturally turn to action. Whatever the action might be, you know you can do it and you'll just, you naturally, your thoughts, your dominant thoughts will play out in your life. Literally, you think, I am going to do this, I know I can do this, and then you will get to work, you'll put your shoes on, you'll get your spanners out, you'll start building, you'll start doing what you've got to do. So, so, it's, it's very, very important, it's great, great self-confidence formula. Um, visualize your ideal self. What does your best day look like? I've... I'm a big believer that you've designed the life that you want, design the day. In the process of designing the life that you want, if you sort of reverse engineer that and you think, well, if I want this type of life, first of all, let's start on like a daily scale. Let's start on a monthly. Let's start on a, let, let's start on a, a, a morning or an afternoon. What do I want my night time to look like? It's really, really powerful when you start thinking about just designing your ideal self. Then... All this about this desire drives persistence. Persistence is, is the biggest, it's so big. It's so, so big. How much desire do you have for what you want? Okay, and then the third key takeaway was, I just wanna give you the, the major causes of failure. The major causes of failure, because some of them, it might be relatable in your life. You might think of a goal or a challenge that you've got, and then these are the major causes of failure. I looked at these and I thought to myself, wow, these some of these are, they're cl close to home. Okay, so the major causes of failure is lack of the following. Lack of the following. A well-defined purpose in life. Okay, it's a major cause of failure. Having a lack of defined purpose in life. Because you don't know what you, you don't know where you're going. Lack of ambition to do more. If you don't have the ambition to do more, it ain't going to happen. You're not going to do more. Lack of self-discipline. You've got to have that self-discipline to say no. To say yes. To say what you've got to say in a certain situation. Lack of concentration of effort. You may be everywhere. You've got to concentrate where you've got to, you've only you've got only so much effort that you can put into something, but you've got to concentrate that into something that really something that you really, really want. If you're too diluted, if you if you if you've got no effort at all, it's a major cause of failure. Enthusiasm. You've got to be enthusiastic. You've got to be enthusiastic. Inability to, uh, and then finally, the inability to co cooperate with others because life's a team game. Building a business is a team game. If you want to be successful in your job, in your career, you've got to work with people. You've got to cooperate with people. You've got to be inspired by other people's ideas and you've got to communicate back and forth and, and mastermind and grow together. So if you don't have the ability to cooperate with other people, talk to other people and you're not interested, that is gonna be a cause of failure. So, that was only three key takeaways. There's so much more to this book. Please check it out in the link below. Some questions and actions for you then. Number one, simply, what do you want? What do you want? And I've already spoke about that. It's so, so important. Number two, what are you willing to sacrifice to get it? Are you willing to sacrifice your night times? Are you willing to sacrifice your weekends? Are you willing to sacrifice the chocolate? Are you willing to sacrifice saving the money so you're not going out or whatever it is what are you willing to sacrifice to get it and number three are you aware of your most dominant thoughts are you aware of your most dominant thoughts and one of the things that i um i, I was actually doing um 
that like literally just a, over the last couple of days is I've been writing down just some of the things that are always cropping up in my mind. And I'll be honest, more than half of the things that are coming up in my mind of the most dominant thoughts are always more triggered towards, you know, I've got to, I'm going to take an action, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. But it gave me a, a real good like question for you really was, what are your most dominant thoughts? Because if maybe your most dominant thoughts is, I can't do this, or I don't have the ability to do this, or this is too hard, or I can't, you know, I don't have enough time, I don't have enough money, that's going to play out on your actions. So, this has been Kev here from Life Success Engineer. I hope you enjoyed this. It's a classic, Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. I highly recommend that you check it out. I hope you really, really did enjoy it. Um, again, if you uh, if you really if you like these accelerator notes, I've got I've got many others. Check them all out. I'm getting through. I'm trying to write these accelerate notes as much as I possibly can, PDFs, etc. But um, I'll see you in the next accelerator note. Take care.